So we are going to be doing a mini backyard homestead tour and we are here with Stephanie and Bill and they are going to show us around their homestead that they've been working on. So how long have you guys been here at the property and working on the garden and the space? So we bought the house in fall of 2018 and it was a dead yard. And so we started planting in January of 2019 and been growing it for the five years since. That's awesome. So um, we're gonna take a look around their property, see what they have going on, and maybe you guys could get some ideas to implement in your backyard. Time for a little tour of the St. Pete micro farm. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we fell in love with is a lot of variety and different exotic fruit trees. So at last count, we had 79 different varietals. It took us a long time to find a jujube. We've got a Borneo red jackfruit back there. That's the one that supposedly tastes like Skittles. Uh, peanut butter fruit right here. So really a lot of variety. And the goal was to have it be almost any month of the year. There's something fruiting all the time. The other thing is we put in a ton of infrastructure. We have a well. We also have solar. The solar gives us the energy to drive the well. We have, I believe, five well points in the back, six in the front, and they're all on regular garden hoses. We get high quality hoses and we punch a little hole where we need to, and we turn them into dripper hoses. We found with the, uh, the typical, like the brown hoses, they just don't hold up for us. So by do, using regular garden hoses, they hold up really well. And now we can flip a switch and 90% of the property is getting watered. We were down, we were up to probably 90 minutes a night out here watering, and now we just flip a switch. So that kind of infrastructure, that efficiency allows us to do a lot more. So this is just an example of some of the styling we use when we're planting. We've got a mix of chaya and uh, Cuban oregano. And then there's a lemon drop mango steam couple papayas that'll go up into the overstory. We've got blackberry jam. We've got a uh, curry. I wish you could smell that. It smells so good. <laughs> curry. And then this is the Patonga tuba. We got a Patomba right here. There's a sherbet berry behind me, a wild cinnamon native here, and then a couple of atamoyas. So this is a dryer tumbler. When ours broke down, we decided to upcycle it. So dryer tumbler, this one doesn't have a tire on it, but we have another that has a tire on the bottom, but this is a great planter. Um, we put our sugar cane in it. Sugar cane tends to run. So this is a great way to keep it contained and it is love in the sun. So we just built our new coop back there. It is fit for our nine girls. So I think the one of the coolest things I like about the coop is a lot of times folks have uh, the nesting boxes on the back and they go around the back and, and lift it up. Uh, because of where we put the coop, we couldn't do that. So we made a very large front door and then we enter the front to get the eggs. But we also have a perch right in front of it that we can lift up and get it out of the way so that we can easily harvest the eggs and then put it back down so all nine girls can rest on the perch at night. We also have this right here. This is uh, one of the solo stove bonfire pits. So whenever we have a lot of cuttings, we can throw them in here and, and turn them into biochar. So one of the things we were talking about systems earlier. So a system we have is put the tools that you need to clean the coop on the side of the coop. So we've got a flathead shovel and a broom and dustpan. So when I need to go in and clean out, I dust it off. I actually have a little bin that I, I put everything into and then throw that into the compost. And then the other thing I will highlight is if you get chickens, I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting an automatic door if you let them out to free range. Um, we were previously kind of tied to coming home and being here to let them out in the mornings and to put them up at night. This thing is great. It lets them out in the mornings and it's uh, directed by the, the sunlight. And so we don't have to be here to put them up. Uh, we can actually go on vacation if we want. So when we first started, this project, uh, I had never done any kind of gardening. I think the most I'd ever done was I had a little herb box sitting outside my apartment. And so we were learning, we were learning a lot. And so I think one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give is don't be afraid to change things. Change is kind of hard for me. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we put all that effort in and now we have to change it. But in the long term, if you're making changes for the better, like for example, we just recently, yesterday, moved these bananas next to the outdoor shower the most logical place for them because bananas love water and there's an outdoor shower right there. The bananas were in a place that was pretty dry. So as hard as it was to change, the change is good and so I'm really excited to see them thrive. So our pro tip would be have lots and lots of options for water. In the 
back here we have four different places where there's city water. In the front we have four more spots where there's city water. And it's set out in a triangle, so pretty much any corner you're standing in, you're gonna have ready access to water. If you wanna have an oasis, you have to have a lot of water. So, like I was saying, everything is a system. So turn on the city water. And then when I dump the bird bath, we have a number of things over here that like a lot of water. And I change this pretty much every day. They have numerous water sources they can pull from, but since we change this one almost every day anyway, put plants that need a lot of water. So you guys said when you first started out, it was new for you guys. Um, but what is one thing that you feel like you did right from the beginning? Friendly chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I think the when we first got into this, we volunteered at the 15th Street Farm and talked to a couple folks there who were really into permaculture. And I started reading some books, and one of the things that they talked about was laying mulch. And so we live in the city of St. Pete, and they have free mulch drops. And so that's what we did. I think we've had over a hundred, more probably more than a hundred cubic yards of mulch dropped here. And so the very first thing we did was laid the entire backyard and the entire front yard. There are a lot of sweat equity. <laughs> um, we laid mulch and I think that really set the foundation for building the great things that we have here. You know, that's been a big win and I just thought of this, but I, I want to I wanna throw this out there. When you mentioned the 15th Street Farm. We went over there and helped out, volunteered one day, and at the end of the day, Emmanuel just sent us home with five or six plants. And it's entirely his fault that this is here because <laughs> that's what got us started. And, and we saw that place and we were so inspired, we thought, huh, what can we do here in, in all the decisions we're making? How can we make it wonderful, great for the chickens, great for the plants, great for the environment, but also aesthetically pleasing, so maybe if, if I think it would be good for the world if more people did this and had food just growing in their yard. So maybe some people will see this uh, or come see the project to inspire. And so how can they reach out to you and join your community? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pretty active on Instagram and Facebook as well. So you can find us at the St. Pete Micro Farm Instagram and Facebook. It's S-T-P-E-T-E -E, Micro Farm. So no matter how many years we do this or what is going on, like there's always something where like, mm, should have known that, should have thought about that, should have done something differently. So if you guys could kind of use your hindsight and correct something or do something from the get-go, what would that be for you guys? So you're right, hindsight's 2020. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but at, at the same time, so, so we designed the front yard first. This was where we started. We figured there was nothing but a dead lawn here. Let's try to make it look nice so we're not getting code violations from the city for having an ugly yard. So we started here and we did a whole bunch of things and we learned a ton. And then we did the back. And with what we learned in the front, we applied that to the back and the back came out 10 times better. So now we're rolling back to the front and we're doing a remodel here. There's a lot of pieces that worked really well in the front, but uh, now we're gonna bring it the rest of the way home. So we were actively in the middle of a remodel right now. So your, your redo would almost be be willing to do redos and maybe yes. potentially work in stages, right? So instead of doing the whole thing all at once, do a part, learn some lessons, implement, and then re readdress things as you go. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for showing us around the yeah. property. Um, by. You have an amazing space here, and it's just so wonderful to see people growing food in the city. Even on small urban lots, it can be done. It can be achievable for anybody and everybody if you choose it. Yeah. This thank is only a tenth of an acre beautiful thing. <laughs> beautiful thing to see. Yeah. So much bounty in such a small space. Yep.